Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Mason and let's hear some stories from Reddit. But before that, don't forget to press the like and subscribe so you won't miss any videos in the future. Or maybe leave a comment down below. That really helps the future of the channel and means so much to the effort that I put in every day. Now let's dive into the stories. First story, 5 months W. Oh job but doesn't want feedback or advice. So a friend forwarded a resume of some batch mate of hers, as she is in desperate need of a job. When I checked her resume, I found it was all over the place. So based on the conversation with my friend, I thought I'll get clarity on what she wants and forward her profile accordingly. Post her making some changes, as the current resume looks like management jargons from at least for specializations spilled over 3A for size papers. In random order, complete with flowcharts and tables which, again have random jargons which make no sense. She had seven jobs in the last four years, is unemployed for the last five months, for she got fired for underperforming. She claims she left it owing to visa issues. Visa issue in her home country. The call was short. I clarified at the beginning of the call that I'm not calling for a job, but to get clarity on her profile to refer more effectively. Three minutes into the call, she didn't let me talk. When I explained that I'm just trying to help her fix the obvious issues, as in spite of certifications from eight well-known institutions. She is not getting shortlisted for a reason. She started talking over me saying, I could forward her CV and let her know if I had questions. Well, that exactly what I was trying to do. Ask questions. So I said I needed clarity without which I can't forward your profile in my network. To this she replied, then forward me JD. Job descriptions. You get, I'll choose on my own. I said I'll have to cut short the conversation as this seems to be going nowhere, and disconnected. She then sent me texts accusing me of offering useless advice, a recruitment job, and with barely two years of total experience spread across for years. She wanted leadership roles. After two texts, I gotta be honest, I just replied with screw off, and that it was not in the interview but favor to a friend. Then she proceeded to say she didn't need any favors. Spoke to the common friend later because didn't want my equation with her jeopardized. The friend luckily understood and said to forget about it. Second story, my ex tried to have a birthday bash at the expense of our financial problems. I, 58 male, met Martha, 46 female, in 1995. She was my work friend and came from a very, very dysfunctional home. She ran away at 19 and started over by moving into a friend's friend house, but was having severe problems with the house owner's lifestyle. She slept in the living room, and her hostess was noisy, brought lots of guys home to sleep and was loud in bed, and ended up asking for more money than agreed on plus had a drinking problem. Before this, she bounced between friends' houses. I found her really attractive, although she kind of blew me off every time because she said she was too overweight to be attractive. I was so head over heels for her that I would have given her the world. I was her close friend and confidant. I became her boyfriend and I was so happy to provide love and emotional security. I stood for her while she was bullied by a family member who showed up at our job. When she told me that she would have to move into a homeless shelter, I asked her to give me a few more days until I could rent an apartment so that we could move in together. Those were the most beautiful smas. I introduced her to my family and she became a huge part of my life. We didn't have money for a wedding so I saved up and gave her an engagement ring with the intention of having a small wedding later on. Everything was great until for years into the relationship. She got fired from her job and was so depressed I told her I didn't mind if she took a couple of weeks to clear her mind until she was ready to look for a job. She got out of control, got really lazy and avoided going to job interviews at all costs. I found myself seeking jobs for her but she would just push all the info aside. I got a second job and her expenditure just spiked. I would get home to find lots of catalog purchases and mail packages from Martha Stewart style stuff. I went from asking her to getting mad to begging her not to spend our money on crap. She would cry and immediately recall her family's abuse. I fell for it so many times. Red flag. Then she reconnected with friends from her old hometown. These people loved her and I was clear they were more than welcome to stay over every now and then because I just loved seeing her so happy. The first visits were great. After that, she would change whenever they were around. Martha would yell at me, threaten not to marry me, mock and treat me like crap in front of them. Honestly, I felt like she just wanted to show them that she had someone who loved her so much that she could just be a bully. Also, one of her friends was absolutely gorgeous and loved her like a sister. Mandy, F48, always treated me like family but I don't know if Martha was jealous. Mandy became like sister to me. I saw her do some things to Mandy, 
and I slowly became aware that the woman I loved at the starting point of our relationship was not real. Mandy always brought lots of gifts for her. She always called, especially when Martha got sick with the flu. There was an incident about some lipstick Mandy was wearing. Her boyfriend at the time said he liked that color. I caught Martha running her finger through Mandy's lips and rubbing the lipstick on her own mouth. Mandy yelled at her to stop. It was disgusting. Another time, Mandy was upset because she and her boyfriend broke up. She was trying to fight back her tears and Mara kept pushing her to talk about it. Martha got up and got herself in front of Mandy and grabbed her face and kind of stretched her cheeks while forcefully grabbing her face and said what's with the secrecy. I know you are crying. I felt so bad I just got up and said I was going for pizza because Mandy was embarrassed. I addressed with with Martha and because I found it humiliating. I began to lose my peace of mind. Martha would chase me around the house yelling and screaming if I didn't comply with whatever she wanted. The ups and downs made our situation very unstable. She didn't want to spend time with my family, nor wanted me to go visit. Whenever I got really upset and swallowed my anger, by staying quiet, she would have crying fits and faint. I told her I would call an ambulance next time, and her fainting just stopped. The turning point happened when we had a small get-together with her friends. There was a Madonna song on the radio, and she suddenly got passive-aggressive. Martha just jumped from my lap and pushed me aside. Then she got nasty. Martha slammed the bathroom and bedroom doors. Everyone was flabbergasted. She confronted me in the hallway because she knew that used to be a song I hated because it reminded me of my ex. Something I told her when we were just friends. I was forced to promise her that all memories from my ex were magically deleted from my head. Then she turned around smiling and told Mandy he better learn. I caught her kind of smiling. Mandy shook her head and struggled to act normal. That was a huge blow to my trust. We still had fights over her spending habits. She had a job and paid for some expenses, but developed a gambling habit and would go to Atlantic City every week. I began to finally open my eyes. She was not a fiancé. She was an obligation. I've always felt like she chose me as her caregiver. I always tried to do something special for her birthday. That year was financially rough, and I told her I would buy her a gift but outings were out of the question. She said okay, but then took me by surprise when she said her people are coming over on the weekend because she planned a party. We couldn't afford it. Things got so bad for us we were eating almost half our usual meals, dividing a chicken breast into portions. Just to save money and our refrigerator hadn't been filled and stocked up in months. Martha and I had a huge argument on the day of her birthday, because she told me not to embarrass her. That her friends were coming over and that was that. Then she told me to be home, so that the balloons could be delivered. At this point, we were yelling at each other on the phone. She was out to get the food. The balloon guy came in and brought some decorations, and my mind kept going crazy because all that money could have gone towards paying a bill or something necessary. I grabbed my stuff and left. It wasn't a very easy decision, but I was depressed and drowning. I never saw a light at the end of the tunnel. I could row so much but I never saw a resolution. My friend, Josh, who lived upstairs knew about my situation, and he really came through by helping me load all my stuff inside his car. I took the goddamn radio and the TV and some other stuff I paid for. Josh said she shouldn't have such a fancy birthday decor at my expense. So he popped all the balloons. I didn't care. The pain of being fed up and fatigued is something I wouldn't wish on anyone. I was so pissed I cancelled all the utilities and the ATM I gave her for emergencies. I lived with my aunt until I got back on my feet and found my own place. Then I left for Connecticut, found a similar job and changed my number when Martha kept calling me from different numbers. She went from begging to insulting me. I paid back by calling each and every one of the people she owed money, friends and a neighbor, too and let them know she would never pay them because I was the one always making sure she made good on her obligations. I never heard back from her until I moved back to NJ. It took me years to lose the feeling that I wasn't worthy of love unless I sacrificed my finances. Some of her friends tried to reach out via email only to wish me Mary's mass, but I never replied because I was so ashamed at being used that I just wanted to disappear. I did get back in touch with Mandy via Facebook. Years later, she was the only one who ever tried to talk Martha into treating me with respect. We had a long phone call, and she filled me in about everything that went down on Martha's birthday. Mandy told me the party was ruined because as soon as everyone came in, they were greeted with the news that I was crazy and had run off on Martha not before destroying the decoration. They had to console her for over a year. Friends started dropping like flies, because she turned everything into a pity party. Martha couldn't afford rent, 
so she went on a vicious cycle of staying with her friends, becoming a burden getting kicked out. Repeat. She and Mandy aren't talking because Martha ghosted Mandy when Mandy announced she was getting married. Also, Martha met a guy who dumped her for her antics and said he would call the police if she ever tried to contact him. I took over 12 years of crap so I'm really happy that I left that energy black hole. Mandy said that Martha kept complaining that I deserted her and that one of her friends took her to small claims court. I struggled with self-esteem issues, but I have realized I stayed because I felt responsible for her. Third story, Eb follows me home. This just happened and I'm shaken up still. I was driving to my boyfriend's house and tried to switch to the right lane. I put my signal and looked and didn't see anyone so I started merging but my blind spot sensor went off so I stopped. Waited for the car, a newish looking Audi, to pass, and went behind the car. I don't know if this irrelevant, but I just got an SUV about one, five months ago and still getting used to it. Used to driving a little Elantra. I'm also Asian, this is relevant. The girl who's driving loses it, is screaming at me through the window while I'm getting behind her and I just thought to myself geez chill out it's not even like I actually got in your lane or anything. She slams on her brakes in the middle of the road, road rage much. And thankfully there's a gas station so I turn into it to get away from her and I had to turn on the road it was on anyway. She realizes I'm leaving, floors it to the other entrance of the gas station and comes straight at me almost t-boning me. People are screaming and jumping. I get out of the way and drive to my boyfriend's house which is literally the next street over. Pull into the driveway. And this Eb skirts right up behind my car and blocks me. And starts screaming at me, saying I knew you were Asian Aliel don't know how to fucking drive. Go back to your country stupid ugly Chinese bitch ain't none of us want y'all here anyway spreading that shit. See me bitch? That's why you won't cause you scary as fuck. That's exactly what she said I know it doesn't make sense. Etc. My boyfriend and his kids saw the whole thing. I had to call the police and make a report and now I just feel depressed. Also, I realize I shouldn't have driven to my boyfriend's house in hindsight, but I didn't realize she was actually following me until she pulled up behind me. I just assumed we might be going the same way since the gas station is right by the house, but if I figured it out sooner I probably would have just called 911 right then instead of after she left. Anyway yay. Fucking sucks I hate it. If you're reading this fuck you Eb you're a crazy psycho. That has no life. You're a clown and I hope nothing works out for you. Last story, long term, former, friend, entitled bitch expects me to send both her children interstate because she didn't bother to bring them to their grandfather's bedside vigil. I, 35 female, won't go into background detail of how many times I forgave Cheryl's entitled bitch shitty selfish using behavior throughout our nearly decade long friendship and helped her countless times yet my feelings or hardships meant jacket. She continually proved I would be let down. Let's just say this was a recurring theme and a couple of months ago I finally had enough when she blamed me and tried to twist the truth, etc. to excuse her own shitness. Can elaborate if anyone is curious. But that's another story. Despite her screwing me over I expressed that perhaps it's best to make peace. Wasn't wanting it to go back to friendship but let any anger go and be cordial. No response. Anyway, so a couple of days ago, Cheryl's father had a heart attack. He's now in a coma and it's extremely dire and absolutely devastating. All Cheryl's siblings moved across the country too, while he has a terminal illness mind you. So they flew back to go be by his side. The rest of Cheryl's siblings have partners, so they could stay back and look after their kids. Except her, who saw fit to send her son Ricky, 14, to stay at a mate's place while she's gone, and told her daughter Angela, 16, to stay with friends or at home alone essentially leaving her in the lurch, and at best coping at home with no support and shit all safety either. They live in a rough area too. No car, her school is miles away to so she doesn't have a way to even get to school, or her min-wage fast food job. When Angela told me about her grandfather, I passed on my best wishes to Cheryl despite the fact we are no longer friends. Still, no response. I've kept in touch with Angela since my and Cheryl's friendship broke down. Angela turns to me when she needs, and I'm always happy to help. I adore her like the daughter I never had. So anyway, Angela called me and asked if I can pick her up take her to work, etc. No problems. I also offered her to stay with us if her mom won't get her a flight she so desperately needs to go see her grandfather for one last time. It seems he's not going to make it. She said yes please cause otherwise she's stuck. She kept saying how she wants to travel to see him, but her mom said she can't afford to pay for it. So Angela worked a long shifts trying to get the money to buy her own ticket. I told her I'll buy it but she didn't accept so I said maybe we can get compassionate flights. 
and she asked me last night if I can try today and I did. She told her mom and would you believe she asked Angela to ask me to also organize it for Ricky too. She organized accommodation for him, not Angela. And I'm happy to help Angela. But Cheryl screwed me over. I have tried to at least make peace, and also sent my good wishes which were ignored. And then she wants me to organize Ricky's flight too. Through Angela. Not ask me directly. I literally spent three hours on the phone with the airline, and they were useless. The word compassion isn't something they should use as they got none. But I'm left bewildered. This ebb won't acknowledge my attempts at some sort of peaceful resolution even if it's just a high by situation when we cross paths so it's not awkward. Even though she owes me an apology, yet wants me to bend over backwards helping her like I used to when we were friends. I'll always help Angela whenever she needs. But not Cheryl. Get fucked with your entitled bees Cheryl. Find someone else to tolerate or shit. Cause I'm done. TLDR, it burnt our long-term friendship bridges, but still expects me to do triple backward somersaults to help her despite not accepting I was willing to make peace without the apology I deserve. That's it for the story, thanks for watching.